Test. Oh, there we go. Hey. How are you guys doing? Yay. All right. Welcome to uh, Hands On Heat with Heat tutorial at the uh, Vancouver OpenStack Summit. I'm really excited. I just saw the, the, the screen outside on the, the TV monitors saying that next year it's going to be in Austin, which is my hometown. So I'm very excited for you guys to all come back and visit my hometown and go to Torchy's Tacos. It's a wonderful little food truck, uh, truck uh, place. Great tacos. So when you come next year, make sure you go. <coughs> I've converted our entire sales team. Torchy's Tacos. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Good morning, uh, and welcome to the Hands-On with Heat tutorial. Uh, my name is Rick Ashford. Uh, I am a technical specialist, uh, pre-sales engineer, solution architect, technical specialist. There's like so many titles you can use for these. Uh, today, we're going to be a technical specialist uh, for SUSE Linux. <coughs> I've been with them for about uh, six and a half years. Uh, helping me out today is going to be uh, Cameron Cedar over here. He has been with SUSE for, what, eight years? Ten years. OK. Uh, so we've got some uh, good expertise in lurking in the back, but not really helping today is uh, Jeff Lindholm from Sousa. He's been doing this for 14 years. So got a lot of experience here in the room. Uh, we're really excited to be able to uh, work with you guys today. Uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, I'm going to run through the slides for just a couple of minutes, uh, not too terribly long. <clears throat> and then when we get to the end of that, I'll throw up a slide that has uh, the uh, URL for where to go to hit the, uh, the Horizon dashboard. Uh, and to be able to download uh, some lab materials. <coughs> so let's go ahead and get into it. And it helps if you turn on your presenter. There we go. All right, let's, so let's talk about sort of deploying services in the cloud. So there's really three ways that you can do uh, deploying your services. There's the easy way, the not quite as easy way, and the hard up front, but totally easier in the way, end way, <coughs> which is where we're going to spend most of our time. So the easy way, manual deployment process, right? You can pull up your web browser. It's very easy. You just go select the images you need. You create the networks you need and go through and do it. And everything comes up. And life is wonderful. You get a raise uh, and become the hero of the company. <coughs> um, the uh, not quite as easy, you can go in if you want to automate that. Uh, because the, uh, the manual method does not scale up very well to large deployments. Uh, you can use the API. So you can use the Python libraries or whatever uh, you want to use. <coughs> you can script it all out. And it's a little bit labor intensive uh, up front, but that can easily scale out to large deployments. The problem with that is it's not very uh, terribly friendly to all cloud uh, potential cloud users. Not everybody wants to dive into the command line uh, and execute a script to be able to get what they want. <coughs> At least not the people I know. So, Hard thing, uh, the hard, way, hard up front, but totally easier in the end way, uh, at least in my opinion, is uh, using Heat, which is why we're all here today. Uh, so Heat was an incubator project starting in the Grizzly release. Um, <coughs> we have supported it at SUSE as of our 3.0 Havana release. We're now at uh, 5.0, which is our uh, Juno release. So we've been doing, we've been working with this for a while. Uh, <coughs> and so the uh, overall definition that you read on the pages, that it's a surface architecture, blah blah blah. It's I, to me, it's a little bit dense uh, to read that. So the way I define it is, this <coughs> is a heat allows you to predefine a set of your compute, network, and your storage requirements for a specific service, and then deploy the whole thing automatically. And life is wonderful. OK. So first off, why is it called heat? Because heat makes the clouds rise. Yeah, get it? Your services are coming up in the cloud, huh? I don't make the jokes. That's just the way it is. OK. So there's a couple different formats you can use to be able to, uh, to build your heat templates. Uh, first off, it was made to be compatible with Amazon Web Services Cloud Formations uh, API. Yeah, boo, up here in the front. Oh, and a thumbs up. You guys can fight it out. Uh, so <coughs> the, the idea there being that if you have people that are uh, currently on Amazon, you want to migrate them to OpenStack, it makes it easier. They can port over all the work they've already done. They don't have to start from scratch, <coughs> in theory, as long as everything that they've used has been implemented in heat, which doesn't always happen. OK, so that can be done in JSON or YAML. Uh, and then we have the heat orchestration template, uh, which are, are hot. And that's the uh, kind of the preferred way for doing things. That's the OpenStack native way uh, for doing heat templates. Uh, and that is done in YAML. And what is YAML, for those of you who are unfamiliar? So it stands for YAML Ana Markup Language, another wonderful acronym uh, for the open source community. Uh, so it's, it's 
basically just a, you know a structured via indentation. Uh, you can have uh, your sequence items or don't have a, a dash on them, key pairs, or, or you know have your value, value col uh, ID colon value type uh, type uh, format. So is it is this readable in the back of the room? By the way, okay, okay, good. All right, so <clears throat> just the, the snippets of code in here, don't worry about trying to copy them right now. They're all going to be in the lab materials uh, that we have here in just a moment. So uh, don't feel like you have to scramble or you're going to be out, uh, out of sorts. Uh, so just a simple hello world like this. You can see it's very simple to define a, uh, a blog. Uh, this is just a, a simple startup one, one instance, right? Uh, so in this case, we're going to be starting up a blog. So we've got a, a, web, a WordPress image right here that uh, has a SSH key, uh, and you tell it what size you want it to be. Very quick and easy. You get to one thing. <coughs> All right. So then you can, you can start to uh, expand out on that. Now, say, for example, you want to be able to take some user input uh, to uh, be able to do things like indicate you know, what, uh, what flavor do you want to have in, instead of having a pre-baked uh, flavor. Uh, you can do, um, what else do we have in here? Oh, I just got generic stuff in here. OK, uh, so you can do things like pull in network IDs, uh, all that kind of fun, fun stuff. You can, you can pull in uh, user input. <clears throat> all right, uh, then from a parameters instance, you can do things like starting to set uh, defaults so that you, instead of just putting up a blank box, you can have it pre-filled with uh, whatever it is that you want them to be able to choose. Great stuff. Uh, you have down here this hidden colon true. Uh, that will make it so that if, let's say, you're having them input a password, uh, it gives it a little dot, dot, dot instead of the, the letters so that it's not showing off to the person looking over their shoulder uh, to uh, grab the password. Although, I guess if they're looking over your shoulder and you can see what you're typing on the keyboard, it really doesn't matter, but especially if they've got Google Glass and they're recording the whole thing. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Next thing you can do is, in addition to uh, you know, once you've got it, so that you've you can uh, you can put the uh, put input in. You can get get stuff from your users. Uh, oftentimes, you want to restrict the user input so that you can make sure that they provide valid user input, so that you don't have was the X, did anybody see the XKCD uh, thing with uh, Bobby tables? Remember, everybody remember that one? The, 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 yeah, yeah. Drop Bobby tables was the uh, drop tables Bobby. In the um, <coughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Got to sanitize your input. Okay, so I'm not the only one. Good. It's like I'm not the only nerd in the room. It's great. <laughs> Most rooms I am. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So in this case, uh, we're doing uh, the uh, we're taking the the the, uh, the the flavor and we're restricting out to specific sizes. Uh, of what we want to do. Uh, you can do things uh, like down here with the password. Uh, we're setting uh, allowed patterns. You can put a, reg a regular expression in there uh, and be able to uh, be able to restrict out to, to you know, make sure it's eight characters long, make sure it's got capital letters, lowercase letters, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, you can put that in there. OK, uh, some useful, uh, helpful use, uh, resources. Um, the, uh, the template uh, log, the, the documentation is getting much better. For heat, when I first did the, uh, a similar type session several years ago, <coughs> it was not as fleshed out uh, as you would like it to be. Now, generally speaking, there's usually at least a document entry, documentation entry for each uh, of the things that may not necessarily tell you a whole lot, um, but uh, but at least there's something uh, there for pretty much everything. And then over here on uh, GitHub, uh, there's also a uh, a whole stack of uh, heat templates. Uh, that are out there that you can go through and, and you can evaluate and look at them uh, for, for, to adapt for your own needs. So it gives you a nice uh, starter. All right, so now we're going to get our hands on because this is a hands on tutorial, right? All right, so you guys should be already be on the, uh, the, the SUSE Heat Lab uh, SSID. We've got two SSIDs, one in the 5 gigahertz range, one in the 2.4. Uh, pick one, hopefully you can get on. We shouldn't have a whole lot of stuff. Um, the dashboard, you're going to log in is uh, 192.168.124.81, OK? And the user, the user number, how we're going to do is I'm going to start right here, and we're just going to go down, and you're going to call out a number. And that number that you call out is going to be your, uh, your the finish off your, your dollar num. So it's 
let's see. Gentleman right here in the, the blue shirt. 16. Eight, okay, and then wrap around back here. Four, six, four. Okay. Sixty nine, seventy. You, you go seventy one. Okay, and then for uh, guys around the background, so I've got this. I've got uh, accounts provisioned out to two hundred. So for those of you who are, who are doing anything, do anything from 75 to 200. Uh, if you're wrapped in a sitting around the edges or something like that and we didn't see you, uh, your odds are pretty good that uh, you will not get overlapped with somebody else. And if you do, then go find another one. So the login will be Geeko <coughs> and then your number. And then the password will be OpenStack. For those of you who are not familiar, uh, Sousa, we have our mascot is the chameleon. And the chameleon's name is Geeko because we wanted to confuse people. It's German humor, I guess. I don't, I don't know. OK, uh, so the lab materials. If you pull up, I have a web browser set up at, uh, off my laptop here. And that has just a simple uh, little uh, patchy uh, web server serving out a directory. And you've got the materials in there. <coughs> the images you will not need to, that are already pre-populated into, uh, into Glance. You do not need to add those in. Those are there so that if you want to download them and take it home, play with it in your own time, give it to your kids for Christmas, uh, you can do that. <coughs> um, yeah, there is, so the, if you look in there, there is a hands-on with heat lab guide, a PDF. Uh, go ahead and download that first and open that up. And basically what we're going to be doing, you know, I'll, I'll do it uh, here for you. So you'll pull it up and you'll and you see there's, there's a series of exercises here. Um, you, you can copy and paste. Um, in my test last night, the, the copying and pasting lost all the indentation. So you are going to have to do the indentation manually anyway. I personally recommend that, if, that you actually type out, at least for the first couple of examples, type out everything so you can sit there and watch it go up on your screen uh, and interact with it a little bit. It helps you to learn it a little bit better. Uh, but if you, do, if you just want to just copy and paste, you will still have to, uh, to fix the formatting. So you'll at least have some interaction with it. So we, I'm, I'm going to leave this up right here for the, for the rest of the, uh, the session right here. So this is going to be self-guided. Uh, so Cameron and myself will be wandering around. If you have questions, we'll be happy to ask you, interact with your neighbors, uh, work with them. Uh, there are a couple places where uh, there may be uh, bugs in the, uh, <coughs> in the implementation. Uh, in, in at least one case, uh, that's there by design uh, to give you a chance to, uh, to trying to debug something on the, on the fly, that's towards the end. Um, <clears throat> if there are other ones in there, it's, that, those are not intentional. I apologize ahead of time. Which one, the, the dot one? OK. So since everybody's going to be doing this, I am going to walk through one real quick. Uh, we can take a look at the, uh, uh, the address space in just a moment, Let's see if we can expand that out. Uh, so logging in, <coughs> uh, your logins will not have access to the admin side of it. You'll want to come down here to the orchestration side and uh, click on Stacks. And we're going to launch a stack. So there's two ways that you can do this. And this is uh, outlined in the lab. Uh, one way you can do it is you can copy and paste things into a uh, text file. Uh, and then from there, copy it over into the, uh, in, in, and upload that text file directly to, the, uh, to here. Uh, the other option is you can go to, to uh, direct input. And you can, you can type it in here directly. And you can type the heat code directly into here uh, and, uh, and launch it up.
What's that? Will you be able to export something that you enter in manually? Uh, the question is, will you be able to export something you enter in manually? No. There's no export functionality on there. There is a project that somebody's uh, written to, to try to do some interesting things like that, but, uh, but that's not part of the uh, baseline uh, project. All right. So uh, just to give you an idea what this is going to look like, uh, in this case, I'm going to do a, a URL because I'm going to cheat and use my web server that I've got right here. He, he's working on it. He's, he's going to expand the IP space so you can get in there. Uh, and so I'm going to I'm going to pull up. Uh, this is just a simple blog, uh, YAML. Uh, so I'm going to be super creative. I'm going to call that a blog, uh, and then we're going to launch it up. Oh, I got to give it a password. <clears throat> and so I can launch it up, and hey, wonderful! We've got the little rag doll right here you can uh, drag it around you can watch your systems uh, provisioning out see right now it's provisioning out the uh, database server and so when you come through uh, once you launch it up you can do things like you can come over and look at the little network topology and you can see the uh, the instances and the, and the networks and whatnot that you've created uh, you can browse around a little bit uh, in this case I've got two instances I've got a WordPress and a MySQL with a custom data network and then I've attached some storage to it so it's a fairly simple uh, service, but it does give you the idea of, the, in general, what you would be doing uh, when, you, when you get there. If you get to the end of the labs, uh, there is one that's a, is a much more advanced uh, type one, and so I, that one I recommend you just download the YAML file from, the, uh, from my little website thing here, <coughs> from the web server. Uh, that is going to be an, uh, an auto-scaling for Apache. Uh, type thing. Now, I, word of warning, just because of the way we have the setups here, they have the cloud internal so that we didn't have to worry about going outside. Uh, you, it does not have access uh, to the, uh, uh, <coughs> to the uh, network for being able to, to, to hit the, the server and actually be able to make it, force it to auto scale up. Uh, but, it's, but you can at least see what's going on in there. And it, it gives you some suggestions in there for ways that you can tweak it and go explore. Uh, and exercise some uh, intellectual curiosity. So, with what? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, the environment, uh, don't worry about that for right now. Yeah. All right. So, put this back up here. Uh, if you guys have questions, let me know. Oh, and remember, this is a shared space. We do have these. So just so you guys know what you're playing on right here, because I think it's really cool. Uh, we've got 12 uh, Lenovo W530 laptops up here. Uh, they have, yeah, this is great. I had to carry this through the airport in Orlando <laughs> on Sunday morning at 5 o'clock in the morning, and they did not, they did not like me. <clears throat> Uh, so the 12 uh, W530s, that's quad core with 32 gigs of RAM and a terabyte SSD and at least one terabyte SSD in each one of them. Uh, so we've got a fair amount of resources here for the room. That said, it is a, a limited resource once we get to this kind of scale. Uh, so I would ask that you'd not have more than one of the, uh, of the stacks running at any given time for your particular user. Just to leave the resources available uh, for stuff. T tear it down before you go, go to the next one. All righty. Everybody happy? All right, go to it.
for anybody who came in late, um, the uh, the usernames it starts with Geeko and then the number. Uh, the um, the numbers go all the way up to 200. We assigned out the first 74 of those. So pick something random between 75 and uh, 200. Uh, and you can log in and you can do that yourself. All right. What? The Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi. They're, they're, they're reconfiguring the address space right now for uh, to, to expand it out and get more people in here. There you go. Thanks, Kent. Are we supposed to be able to get to the instance once it's created? No. Okay. no. I think the question over here is, are you supposed to be able to get to the instance once it's created? And the answer is no, just because we didn't want to have to mess with having you guys reconfigure VLANs on your systems and all that kind of stuff. It just, it, there's only so much I can walk you through, right? Anybody wants to take pictures with the chameleon afterwards, you're welcome to. You can't take it home with me. I already tried. With the chameleon? With the chameleon. Well, you, you don't have to stand on the podium. We can do it down here. He's mobile.
Absolutely. So <clears throat> if you want to get the materials, if you drop by the SUSE booth and have them scan you, uh, and, then, uh, and then just tell them that you want to get the lab materials, uh, they will do that. Kent actually just went to go get our scanner and bring it over here so that if anybody wants to, he can, we can scan you right here on the spot uh, and do it. But uh, I will go ahead and put my email address up here as well so that if anybody wants it, you can, uh, you can harass me. Just don't sign me up for any uh, weird stuff. Please don't. So the question right here is, are these templates one-time use? Uh, no, you can take this, and for example, that blog one I have right here with the MySQL and WordPress, you could launch up 10 instances of that, right? And then just you know, give them all their separate namespaces and all that kind of stuff and different data networks. Uh, and you can, you can do that. And then that way, that gives you the ability to scale out and build um, scalable services very quickly and easily. So it's absolutely multi-use. All right, those of you who are having trouble with the wireless, give that another shot. Uh, we think we've got it fixed. Okay, we do have the scanner now, so if anybody wants to get scanned to uh, get access to the materials later, uh, we can do that now.
10.30. We've got a couple people that are getting up and leaving for uh, other sessions. Uh, if, uh, if that should free up some more uh, IP addresses here. So if you've been trying to get on and you're going to keep getting booted off, uh, give it another shot.
those of you who are getting to the networking one, uh, I, I had one intentional error and one unintentional error in there. Uh, for those of you who are looking for the floating network ID, uh, that's this guy right here. Uh, the other network ID that is in there incorrectly, you should be able to find it within the interface. I forgot that you guys couldn't see all the stuff that I could see as an admin. Whoops. <laughs>